Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I've got a really fun way that you can make jeans or shorts a little bit bigger and a lot more interesting. So I've got a pair of jeans and a pair of shorts. They're both size 8 and I'm a 10. And so I'll be making them bigger but I'm going to do it in such a way that's just kind of fun and creative and a nice way to play around with fabrics. You'll need a fabric that looks good with the pants or shorts that you're going, going to do, but also in colors that will coordinate with other things that you're gonna wear them with. And you need the fabric to be long enough to make a strip that's the length of the shorts or pants. So we are adding a strip down to each side, but we're also gonna sort of soften that line by playing around with a bit of applique. I used to make and sell these in a market here in British Columbia they were really popular because they're just really really pretty and fun and it opens up that size range for you as well. So the only other thing that I recommend using for a project like this, anytime I'm doing applique, I love to use a product like this. This one is from Pellon and it's called Wonder Under and we're going to be ironing it onto the fabric and basically turning the fabric into an iron-on patch. But I don't just leave it like that because I don't feel like that's very durable. So I'm going to be applicating it onto the jeans as well. But that Wonder Under really makes it so much easier to get that going. Now the fabric that you use also needs to be pre-washed because the jeans or shorts that you're doing are going to be, I'm sure, washed a whole bunch of times. So you need to make sure that if that fabric is going to shrink, it shrinks before you sew them into your jeans or shorts. So if that all sounds good to you, let's get busy. So the fun part about this is finding a fabric that you'll be putting into the strip down the side. And I've had this fabric for a while. It's beautiful and I just love it. So I think that will be gorgeous. But remember, I'm not just doing a strip. I'm going to be also doing some applique that's kind of coming out from the strip to soften this line. It's going to be mm, nice. And then for these kind of coral color shorts, I found this fabric in my stash as well. And then I'll applique some hearts onto here as well. That'll be cute. On this fabric, I only have one skinny section that's long enough to go the whole length of the side seam. Now, if you just don't have a, a place that's long enough, you can, of course, join the strip with two pieces if you need to. But I'm gonna just cut two strips right from here. And the maximum width I can put here is five inches for both. So they're gonna be two and a half inches each. And now remember though, we'll take seam allowance off both sides. So my strip is actually gonna end up being one and a half inches total, which I think that's about perfect. Now, if I could snip and tear this fabric, I would, but I don't think that this kind of slubby linen type fabric is gonna tear very well. So I'll just try it here. <laughs> like not at all, not at all. So if I can't tear it to get it on green, what I can do is pull a thread, especially on a loosely woven fabric like this. I can just pull a thread and I can see that line there. Can you see that line going straight across? And that shows me perfect grain. And so I'll cut there. If your fabric will snip and tear though, that's the way to go. I don't have to do that for all of the lines, just the first one so I can safely measure from it. Good, so now I've got a straight edge that's right on grain. So then I just need to lay that two and a half line right along the edge of my fabric. You wanna make this strip a good few inches longer than the jeans because we're gonna be wrapping it around the waistband to finish that waistband nicely on the inside and the outside. Okay, so there's two beautiful strips. Love it. And now I can plan the appliques. On any creative project, there's a few ways you can go. One way that I like to use sometimes is a template that I would cut out of any fabric. Let's say a small print like that, the pattern in here doesn't really lend itself to cutting out flowers. It's too small. I could use a template like this and cut out my piece and applique that on, and that could be really, really pretty. I think the search term I used for this was meandering flowers, free clip art. Or on a fabric like this, you can kind of just follow some of the images in the fabric. Now these are really big though. I don't think I want such big appliques. I can kind of cut into it, not use the whole flower, but just make my own flower shape 
within that design. You get what I mean? I think that could work nicely. I'm gonna fuse the wonder under to this whole section. And then I think from there, I'll be able to cut out the pieces that I want to use. With wonder under, there's a glue side and a paper side. So I'll be fusing this glue side to the back. Now I've got to save some for my shorts project, so I'll be a little bit stingy. Even shapes like this that are between the flowers, I'm going to want to hang on to those and not waste anything here. That should do. And now it's about the right shape. I'll put it under the fabric and iron that onto the fabric. I'm turning the steam off. And you just want to check that it's sticking. If it's not stuck down, keep going. Don't peel off the paper until you cut out your design. You can kind of draw in your own flower shapes. I'm loving this cascade here. And don't have any fear and just kind of have fun with it. I'll cut that out and see what that looks like. And it doesn't matter too much. If I start off too big, I can take away. If I start off too small, I can add to it. Look at it, like that looks like it's meant to be like that, right? As soon as you make your own shape, then that's what it is, it's beautiful. So there's no right and wrong way to do this. One thing I have to keep in mind though, is that I have to zigzag around all of these shapes. So I don't wanna to get too convoluted because that would make for some tricky sewing. And of course that's my friction pen, so that black outline is gonna just get ironed right off. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. But if you had holes in your jeans, you could be strategic and patch the holes with your flowers if you wanted. So this is all one piece, but I can also just piece bits together, right? They don't all necessarily have to start off connected like that. It's a joy and a pleasure to sort of just let the fabric suggest to you what it wants to do. And again, I want it coming out of that side seam, but sort of interacting with the pockets. So even if you're not artistic, you're gonna feel like an artist doing this. So if you can tear your fabric and if it doesn't distort your fabric too much, then just tear. You see how it's making lines into the print a bit, causing white lines? That's okay, because I'll be sewing there anyway. That's gonna get hidden. As long as it's not doing too much of that, then I'm safe to tear. Fabric is always going to tear straight between two yarns in the fabric. And I can tear much straighter than I can cut. Two and a half and two and a half. And now for this one, I just want to applique a few hearts. And the bigger ones are actually gonna be easier to sew on. I'm not cutting neatly now. I just want to get that onto the wonder under and then I'll cut neatly right beside my heart. This is the gluey side. I want to put it to the wrong side of my fabric and kind of any which way. There's no grain or anything to the wonder under. That'll be fine. So this is just regular parchment paper. I'm just scared that I'll get glue on the ironing board. Oh yes, I definitely would have got glue on the ironing board. So now I can cut these all out right along the edge of the heart and they all become iron-on patches. And then you know what this suggests to me, that of course you could just cut hearts out of any fabric, right? There's not much more I can do until I get the side seams of the shorts and the jeans opened up. So I really need to go do that. Both of these have a double top stitch seam, but it only goes to the bottom of the pocket, so that's not too bad to take out. And then below that is just a simple seam. So I'll start just by opening up that bit of the waistband at the top. When you've got a double top stitch seam like this, it can be really a pain in the butt to open up all these stitches. The easiest way really, I think, is just to pull your edges apart get those three lines of stitching to show up and just cut across like that. So that'll take care of the upper part that's got the double top stitch. And then you get into this part that has a chain stitch. And then the chain stitch is the easy part. So at some point you'll find 
where the chain will just like there. Like that's lovely, right? That's actually fun. So just zip that right up. Then you've got the serging. And on a stiff fabric like this, it's too hard, I think, to pull the needle thread. So I just take my seam ripper and kind of run it along the top edge like that. Once you've removed that edge of the serger, the rest of it just opens up. Don't pull too hard if you meet a snag like that. Just go in sideways, but pretty much it'll open up for you. If you're not too concerned about making them as big as possible, there's nothing that says you can't just cut that seam right off, which is what I did with the pink ones. I just got tired of seam ripping, so I just cut the seam right off. That's no problem and then cut right through the waistband and through the hem. Easy peasy. So the strips will be on the sides. So now these are all my little appliques. Now I just have to sort out what is gonna go where. And I also have to decide if any of my applique is going to go onto the strip, because I could do that too. I think this is quite pretty when it comes out from the strip and then goes over. That's really intriguing. Play around until you love it. Once I am happy with it, and I'm not sure that I'm happy yet, but then I have to peel off the paper off the back and then pin them in place and then iron them on. So this one I'll be sewing down, but I'm gonna keep the leaves free so I can sew them on top of the strip after. So I won't be peeling the paper off the leaves. Peeling off the paper, making sure the glue stays onto the fabric. I'll just tear the paper away there. Perfect. That's going there. Is it getting to be too much? Who's gonna say there's too many flowers? What does that even mean, too many flowers? That's not a thing. So now we just start ironing on. So do you see what I mean that the Wonder Under turns your fabric into an iron-on patch? But it's not durable. As soon as I wash this, that's all gonna fray and be a mess. But it certainly helps me to get started on an applique. Beautiful. Oh, I'm falling in love. Gorgeous. Right. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oof. So when I have them where I like them, then I'll just peel off the paper and stick a pin just to get me to the iron. Now this one that's going to be sewing over the strip, I just want to peel off half the paper. I just crease it there so I know that's where I want to peel. Good. Something about like that. And then this little one it's encroaching on the pocket, so I just want to make sure I only sew it to the one layer. I don't want to sew it right through the pocket. Play around, play around, till you're happy with front, back, and side. And now I'll take it to the iron. Okay. And then this is the one that has the paper still on there, on one side. So with those ironed on, let's go to the machines. So now I'm using that little zigzag stitch that is just 2.5 millimeters wide and one millimeter long and a universal needle. And I want to start at a point or a V just so my back tack is sort of more logically placed. I wouldn't want to start on an edge and have a funny looking back tack there. Lots of little curves and little pivots. And I want my needle to be going on the applique and just barely off and back on and barely off. And I want my needle on the right if I'm turning left. And you can see that having the side seam open makes these so much easier, especially on the long jeans. If I had to do this kind of intricate work inside the leg of the jeans, it would be so much harder. Okay, so that's cute, right? I can take little tiny scissors and trim off the edge or any little little threads that are sticking out. That's really sweet. Okay, cute, cute. So again, starting at the V or the point. Try to swing smoothly around in the curves. You 
Yeah, I felt that one, that little wobble there. That scared me. Uh, so what to do? Leave it or go back over it? I mean, if it really bothered me or if I was selling these, I might unpick that bit and then just replace it. But these are just for me and I'm not bothered too much. This is the one that I just had to leave free from the seam allowance. So I just went around there and left that at whole edge free. I'll sew that on after uh, I get the strips in place. But all the little hearts are in place. The smaller the hearts are, the trickier it is to be smooth around that curve. I actually didn't do the greatest job around there, but that'll do. Okay. I heard you yelling at the screen that I should fix that, so I'm fixing it. Okay, better? Good. Okay. So the jeans applique, it was the exact same process as the hearts, just a lot more, right? And a lot more convoluted, right? But in some ways, this was easier. Lots and lots of little pivots, but it was so freeform that if I wobbled, it didn't matter. Whereas on the heart, the hearts were so precise and with that hard edge, every little wobble showed. But here, any little wobble seems like part of the flower, part of the design. These are free so that I can sew that strip on. There were some areas that I made using multiple layers of that fabric. And so here you can barely see that I zigzagged across there, there overlapping, but it all kind of just blends into one. And so it doesn't really have a pieced together look. It all looks like one design, right? And I just love that. So in some ways this was easier, in some ways it was harder. There's so many more twists and bends, but I didn't have to be as precise, but I just love the look of it. So before I sew the strips on, I just need to sew the ends of the waistband back down, just to neaten that up. Okay, so just so that is sewn down neatly. All four ends of the waistband. Uh, I think the hem is fine, but if it was coming apart, I would sew over the ends of those as well. Okay. So sewing the strips on. So this is where I kind of wanted that white space. So I'm just gonna be sewing it right side together with the shorts, move this heart out of the way so I don't catch it. And I want to have at least the width of the waistband plus a little bit of seam allowance tucked under. Sticking up above the top of the waistband, I wanna have at least two and a half inches. Extra is fine at this point. And at the bottom, I want to have twice the width of the hem, so I'd like to have an inch and a quarter at least down there. I'll sew this at the edge of my presser foot, so about a quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'll serge. I want to catch the pocket bag into the seam and the waistband. I'm just going right up through the waistband. Be aware of rivets like this. I'm going to be sewing here, so I'm okay. But sometimes there'll be one on the side of the pocket, and you really have to be careful. Sometimes I've had to remove rivets or just sort of leave a gap there. So I'll sew those. I'm just sewing with a regular stitch at the edge of my presser foot all the way up the side. Catch me in the side of the pocket, making sure I'm not hitting any rivets. There's the rivet over here. And I just take it right through to the top of the waistband. So I did both sides like that. Here's where the heart was folded out of my way, so I didn't catch that in the seam. Good, and I'm gonna take that to the serger. When you're serging, go slowly over the thick parts, and I'm not cutting off much at all, just the fuzzy edge. Super cute. And then that heart will come over and I'll finish that zigzag. Sweet. Okay, so now at the iron, I have a chance to press the hearts from the back, press my little pocket bag, but mainly what I'm doing is pressing the seam allowance going out toward the strip. And I want to make sure the strip is fully extended out there. Okay. And I can even press in a little fold at the hem. That'll make that easier. And then up here above the waistband, I'll fold that in as well. 
nice and flat. Then I can peel off the rest of the paper and iron that down. I love that, how it kind of blurs that line and sort of tricks the eye a little bit. Excellent, so now I'll just go in with my little zigzag and then I'll be able to sew the strip to the back. Awesome, that's cute. Back to a straight stitch. And now I'll be sewing the back of the shorts to the strip now. I really wanna make sure I get this top edge of the waistband level with the front. And of course that is a mistake I learned the hard way. And then same thing at the bottom. I wanna have the two edges of the hem level. So those are my two matching points and then I can pin in between. I might just sew this edge and then try them on inside out and just make sure I don't wanna do any fitting on this side. Okay, the fit is great, no problem there. I had them on inside out though, so I couldn't really tell if the hearts are looking great, but I think so. Slowly over the thick parts. And of course you can just zigzag these edges if you don't have access to a serger. So same thing, press the seam allowance toward the strip, but make sure the strip is fully extended out. Like give it a little tug. And also I'll be pressing in that same little fold at the top here. So on the jeans, I have the original seam allowance intact because I didn't cut it off, I just unpicked it all. So for now, I'm just leaving it all, but I still need to tidy up the edge of the waistband and the hem. Sometimes when I'm working with denim and I don't have the same color of top stitching thread and my thread is so much thinner, um, anywhere I can, I actually don't remove the thread. Even though I've opened up that seam, I don't remove their thread. And then I sew right on top of it and it kind of blends in better. You see how the original thread is still laying there? I think that's better than having just my thinner thread and you know, it just doesn't blend in at all. This is gonna go right past the strip. It'll go onto the back. I think I'll start by sewing the strip onto the back and then zigzag this one down, then the front and do that. Okay. And I have to say, I'm like madly in love with this. I do kind of wish I had gone a little more asymmetrical, like move this one up and this one down. Oh well, by the way, I'm gonna still have to get right in this tube of the leg to zigzag that on. So that's gonna be the hardest part of the whole thing. So had I been smarter, I would have had the leaves cross over like on the front on this side and the back on this leg, but oh, but I went and did it both on the same side. So I did not make my life easy by doing that. So once again, I wanna have two and a half inches sticking up the top. The leaves are out of the way and we're just gonna sew there and serge and be right back. So that is gorgeous. So just the way the jeans have the jeans seam is going, it definitely wants to turn its seam allowance toward the jeans. But just to accommodate the hem and the waistband the way I want to, I'm gonna flip it and make it go toward the strip. And these leaves, I think I will do a lot of the zigzagging on there right now, just because um, that's gonna be tricky to get in there once that seam is sewn. So I'll do like at least half of those, but I won't go within seam allowance range of that. Beautiful. And now the back goes on. So now you see here that the seam allowance of the side seam sticks out far past the waistband. But again, I want the waistbands level and I'll just be kind of splitting the difference coming up there. So I'm just gonna have to kind of come in like that. That'll be fine. The bottom of the hem I want to be level. And that's all fine like that. And then just a couple pins in between. One side is sewn and surged and now I'm sewing on the other side. 
So now here is where the waistband is a little smaller. Ouch. <laughs> so I need to kind of come in on an angle there. I think that'll work out all right. Yeah, that looks all right. I kind of like the way it gets narrower at the waistband. That'll be good. Now we surge. So now I'm working my way in to where this leaf needs to go over because I just got to get her done. Okay. So I like how that connects. That looks great. Is there one more? Oh yeah, this leaf down here. And so you see what I mean, right? Like when the leg is closed up and you're trying to work inside that tube of the leg, it's so much harder than when the side seam is open. So I definitely could have chosen not to do these little overlaps, but I think I'll like it. So now just to finish off the waistband and the hem. So if I fold that hem up nice and level there, and then I just want to tuck the edge in. So I'll cut a little ways above that edge of the hem and turn that in. So nice and neat right there. And then the waistband is kind of the same thing. Her, I'll fold the whole thing down, press, And then I want to be able to turn it up at the bottom of the waistband. So again, I've got just a little extra and just fold it up so that it's even with the inside of the waistband as well. This one I'll be sewing from the outside because I just want to sort of mimic those two lines of stitching. Especially if I'm selling these, I want to tuck in that corner, make that really nice and neat and catch it from the outside. And I don't really necessarily have to sew down those sides. I just really need to catch it across the bottom. So from the outside now. Okay, so that finishes off the waistband nicely. Looks good on the outside. Nice and neat on the inside. And then just sew that little bit of the hem. So these ones are done. So now I just have to finish off the top of the waistband and the hem just the same way I did the pink shorts. Exactly the same. And then just a little hem on the bottom, just the same way as the pink with that double fold. Okay, so both the jeans and the shorts are done and they're completely unique pieces, right? I will never see anybody else wearing items like that. So it's always fun to use your creativity and make something that's just special for you. And whether your aesthetic is the same as mine or different, you can tailor your creation to your taste by choosing different fabrics, different amounts of applique. You can take it a lot more delicate and tame or you can really go wild with it. So I love that it makes the jeans just like a little bit bigger, a little bit baggier, a little bit fuller in the leg. And remember that that strip doesn't have to be just straight. You could even add a flare if you want, which is something really fun to play with right now as well. So have fun with it. I hope you really like that. I had so much fun making these and I'm so glad to have you along for the ride. So until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.